Now, what's the idea we're testing? What, are we, what is all this about? Well, surely, Bob, you know it's about global... What do you mean, global warming? I mean, what sort of an ambiguous term is that? So, uh, newspaper reporters constantly ask me, do I believe in global warming? For God's sake. The hypothesis of the day is, do I believe in dangerous global warming caused by human carbon dioxide emissions? That's what people mean when they say to me, do you believe in global warming? Well, it's a totally different statement. Of course I believe in global warming, I've just shown you. It's always either warming or cooling. That's what climate does. But the hypothesis we need to test, and we're scientists, and I have a black coat today, but I should have a white one on, is, is dangerous global warming caused by human carbon dioxide emissions? And the answer is, well, if it is, then there should be a trend of increasing temperature. No trend there, there's a step. So that's another way of looking at the temperature data for the last 30 years. And here's the third way, and this is the one that you have read in the Sydney Morning Herald ad infinitum. We can fit a line. Now, well done, Bob, you're a scientist at last. You fitted a line through it. Now, anybody knows, and most of the people in this room are technically aware, that the slope of that line depends entirely and exclusively on where you choose to put the beginning and the end. And you can choose different points through this 30 years of data and produce various cooling, warming trends and various cooling trends. But nonetheless, prima facie, let's give the opposition uh, um, the benefit of the doubt. And we'll say, yes, we'll assume this is an absolutely typical piece of Earth history. Nothing unusual about it. There's no natural warming trend going on. And we are producing more carbon dioxide. Here it is, 335 parts per million in 1979 and 388 parts per million last year. That's a 15% increase in carbon dioxide. We told you so, Bob. If we do that, and this guy here bought two SUVs, can you imagine anything worse than that? He's responsible, and the result is this curve here. Well, what was that all about? What that was all about is I've just given you three interpretations of the data. No scientist argues with data. But there are three possible interpretations. Two of those interpretations say there's been no warming uh, in terms of a trend in the last 30 years. The third, this one, which happens to suit the argument of the climate alarmists, yes, there is a trend if you want to put a line through those years, and here's the correlation with a 15% increase in um, global warming. But let me remind you that if we looked at this 10 years here, oh, sorry, 15 years here, we would have a 10% increase in carbon dioxide for no change. And if we look at this bit here, we've got 10 years of no change for another 5% increase in carbon dioxide. Now, what's the hypothesis again? It is that dangerous global warming is caused by an increase in carbon dioxide emissions. Well, I don't see any warming at all here or here, let alone dangerous, but I certainly see an increase in carbon dioxide emissions. We'll come back to that on this slide. Believe it or not, that 30 years of satellite measurements is the only accurate record we have of global average temperature. The one we saw from the thermometers of a 150-year record is indeed the best we can do, but statistically it's highly dubious and we shouldn't rely on it too much. But you can rely on that last 30-odd years of satellite data. If we go back before that, now going back to 1958, this graph is from the second most reliable source of information. It's not quite as good as the satellite records, but it's much better than the thermometer records. And what we see between 1979 and 2002, when this data set ends, is no change. Same temperature, so we see a repetition of what we saw with the satellite record. Same temperature in 1979 that it was in 2002, and it's still the same temperature out here in 2011. And we also see the big spike for El Nino in 1998, so this record matches very well with the satellite record. Where does it come from? It comes from radiosondes mounted on weather balloons that you know they let off at meteorological stations all around the world once or twice every day and they go up right up through the atmosphere and they give us a very accurate record. And we've had that since 1958. From all around the world, those numbers are average. So what that shows us is indeed there was a warming trend between 1979 or 1978 and 2002. Well, we then see, just as we saw 
uh, when we looked at the satellite data, there's a step here, and this is the earlier, earlier to the 1998 El Nino step, uh, known climatological shift. It's called the Great Pacific Climate Shift in 1977. Nobody knows exactly what causes these shifts, probably to do with heat release from the deep ocean, which operates on a much slower time scale than does the atmosphere, but nobody knows for sure, but we do get them. So here's the climate shift in 1977, and now let's look at the data before that, and what we have here, between 1958 and 1977, lo and behold, is a cooling trend. And now, if I put the point on, the temperature in 1958 is the same as the temperature in 1979, same as the temperature in 2002, same as the temperature in 2011. But hang on, Bob, we told you that carbon dioxide's causing warming. Well, here it is. Carbon dioxide here is 315 parts per million. Carbon dioxide here is, that's an almost 20% increase in carbon dioxide over 50 years. And the global temperature has not moved. It's gone down a bit and it's gone up a bit. In both cases, nothing to do with carbon dioxide, natural variation. Science is about testing hypotheses. The temperature data I've shown you test the hypothesis that is the fad of the day, and if you don't think I'm right in choosing the word fad, let me tell you the New Zealand Deputy Prime Minister, and New Zealand, remember, has introduced an emissions trading scheme, admitted in public six months ago, he said, oh yeah, so that was just a fad in 2007. Just think of the damage they've done to their economy, and we're about to do to ours, following this fad. Okay, I'm talking about context. Last slide about context now. It's difficult to get global temperature records as opposed to local or regional temperature records that go back more than 100 years, or indeed more than 50 years for the uh, weather balloon data. But there are ways of doing it with things like tree rings and coral growth rings and so on. And this is the best available estimate of global temperature for the Christian era, the last 2,000 years. And the error bars are plotted, and you see that it warms up to about 900 or 1000 AD, then it cools down into what we call the Little Ice Age, this was the medieval warm period, and then it warms up again. So the context of late 20th century warming, and there was a little bit of warming in the late 20th century, we've seen it on both the satellite and the radio sonde records, the context is this natural millennial cycle of climate change. You've seen that in the Australian? Here's the reporter again. Bob, is, is, uh, is, is global warming happening then? Is it getting warmer? Well, no, it's getting cooler. Here's the temperature at the peak of the medieval warm period. Here's the temperature in 1998, the big El Nino spike. And it's got cooler for the last thousand years. But it's also got warmer for the last 400 years as we come out of the Little Ice Age. So there's nothing unusual at all about the fact we're a little bit warm at the moment. And this ridiculous kindergarten argument which successive ministers come out with, that because 11 out of the last 13 years, or some equally silly number, are the warmest ever, and by ever they mean since we've had thermometers for the last 150 years, because of that we have this global warming crisis. Well, of course 11 out of the last 15 years are the warmest we've had in our little bit up here, because we're approaching the peak. It's like being surprised that most of the warm days of the year occur around Midsummer's Day. That's not a joke. That's deadly accurate. Let me take you back to Professor Stephan's presentation. Remember, he's giving this to the multi-party climate change committee in Canberra. The Prime Minister is chairing the meeting. So this is the bottom line advice on which you and I are going to pay for our family, as you'll see on the later slide, more than $2,000 a year in extra tax for something that will have no effect whatsoever on climate. This is the bottom line in Professor Stephan's view. The earth is warming, 100% certainty. Here's the real bottom line. The Earth is either warming or cooling with 100% certainty, no doubt about it. <laughs> Depends entirely where you choose to put the start and end of your line. And in neither case, no matter what choice you make, there is no evidence the Earth is either warming or cooling dangerously. Number two, human emissions of greenhouse gases are the main cause of the warming observed over the last about 95% certainty. No evidence exists that measurable late 20th century warming was caused by human carbon dioxide emissions. The statement of 95% certainty is fraudulent. It comes from the United Nations in the Governmental Panel on Climate Change. In fact, it's worse than that because the IPCC says 90% of 
And suddenly in Australia, for some reason, that 90% has magically become 95%. In either case, there is no statistical evidence for that. That is just somebody's opinion. And if you didn't know any more about the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change than that they make these numbers up, you should dismiss the advice that comes from the IPCC. It has no scientific credibility whatsoever because it's mixed up with political chicanery like this. No statistical analyses exist that can justify such a wild assertion, which is what it is. Despite considerable uncertainty about the specific consequences of climate change in the future, we know that the risks to society and environment are very large and are growing as we gain more knowledge. There's no credible, documented scientific evidence that the risks of climate change and hazardous climate-related events are changing. I know you'll find that hard to believe. You can't open the newspaper, especially with this conference that's going on in Cairns at the moment, but you fall over some highly qualified scientist that's telling you exactly the opposite. Look into the whites of his eyes and say, show me the evidence. And you will find he hasn't gotten here or she hasn't gotten here. It's their opinion. There is no valid evidence for this. It is certain that, nat that hazardous natural climate events and change are going to continue, quite irrespective of anything that we do. And that leads me as a little foreshadow of where this talk's going at the end. That's a really important point. There's no evidence that there's any change in frequency or magnitude, but there's abundant evidence that natural climate events, as opposed to SUV-inspired climate events, are dangerous. Finally, the scientific basis and imperative for rapid and vigorous action to reduce emissions is overwhelming. Decarbonisation of the economy by 2050 is required to meet the 2 degrees centigrade guardrail. No scientific justification exists for assuming that a 2 degrees centigrade warming would be dangerous. The talk about this 2 degrees C guardrail, then the term is inappropriate, as are any policies that are aimed at achieving it. So here's the real bottom line, and on the basis of that, the government intends to levy a tax which, if it comes in at $25 per tonne of carbon dioxide emitted, will raise $14 billion. There is no scientific basis whatsoever for doing that. There's plenty of basis in we need money for the exchequer, and if you want to tax air, let's tax it. You all know we breathe it out, let's tax it. There's an old joke, the government will be taxing the air we breathe next. It's no longer a joke. <laughs> 